Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to GOD Traders Tea Time with me, Thaddeus Wonchowskis. Today's the 10th of June 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, quick uh, mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Um, now then, uh, also, let's see what's happening here globally in, in terms of the coronavirus. Now the figure continues to rise. And as you can see here, yep, um, unfortunately, the yeah, the number is still uh, moving higher. However, uh, we'll keep a close eye on the daily cases. And uh, yep, uh, we'll, we'll see how everything is going to look tomorrow. But um, hopefully this can start. Uh, shifting to the downside and uh, I hope this little pattern here that we're seeing if we apply technical analysis I hope we're gonna get ourselves a nice uh, head and shoulders here uh, head and shoulders pattern uh, which <laughs> well, which means that uh, a reversal could be possible so yep again like I said for now guys uh, let's keep an eye on this one um, now then, jumping into a few charts. So the first one I want to touch on here is the S&P 500. Now, yesterday the index uh, closed slightly in the red. Um, it moved above this um, above this level right here. And actually, let me just probably clear up the chart here a little bit. Let's uh, do a fresh start. Now, the index yesterday moved. Uh, uh, above, well, actually, slightly above this uh, 3,215 territory marked by the uh, lowest point of January. And uh, uh, is this the lowest point of January? Yes, it is the lowest point of January. So it moved above that. Um, however, it remained, uh, it failed to close, it, fa it failed to remain above this area. So in a way, this kind of raised a bit of concerns. So, however, uh, looking at the cash index and where it's trading at right now, it is currently uh, slightly above this 3,215 area. And just by a fraction, it's above that. So um, yep, so we'll keep an eye on this one. Of course, we'll keep an eye on the high the current highest point of this week near the 3233 mark a nice good push above this yep would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep higher levels could be met so that's why guys we are very close to this to this barrier today Let's see if the bulls have enough steam to push this one higher. And if so, then the next target for us is around the 3,328 zone marked by the uh, low of the 21st of February. Now, of course, you can keep an eye on this little level right here, the high of the 24th of February marked by the, uh, well, actually, the, the high of the 24th of February and marked near the 3,260 mark. And, uh, yep, then a break above this could, yep, open the door towards this 3,000. 328 zone that's going to be our main target for now uh, but in like as I said in order to aim for higher levels we would need to see a nice good strong push above the uh, 3,233 zone, and then yes, we could aim for higher levels. In terms of the downside, now here uh, the situation is a little bit tricky. So, um, of course, let's not forget that we are still trading above this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 23rd of March. 
So in a way, any move lower up until this upside line still could be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. Um, now, the way you could play this one out from the short term perspective, because we do have a bit of, let's say, space here, um, you could keep an eye on this other uh, upside support line. And this one is taken from the low of the 14th of May. So in a way, if we get a nice break of this upside line, then yes, we will aim for lower levels. Uh, then we'll target the 3,131 zone and uh, slightly below that, as I said, we do have this other upside support line, which could provide decent uh, uh, support. So uh, that's why, guys, for now, um, it's a very interesting situation here, we, The probably the situation where we have to wait and either uh, we need to wait for a break above the 3,233 uh, 3, zone or we need to see a, a violation of this shorter term upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of May. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, NASDAQ 100. So this one closed uh, again in the positive territory, C again created a new um, a new all-time high. Um, and looking at the cash index right now, the cash index is even already pushing um, above the um, above the previous uh, previous highs and basically it's it's above the uh, 10,000 mark so uh, well yep I mean this is really really exciting here so we are gonna uh, be seeing a nice opening gap here to the upside now the big question here can this be maintained uh, as I've mentioned before we'll be, we're gonna be very careful the same basically story as we were here back in the uh, in the end of January beginning of February where uh, the index just continued to rally it was just one-way traffic and uh, then eventually we had a, a sharp reversal here so that's why uh, for now yes we will continue aiming higher but we'll be very very careful because any any bad news any uh with today tonight don't forget that we do have the fomc statement so um so keep your eyes on that one so maybe this could stir up the market a little bit however for now um it's just uh moving uh it's just one-way traffic here um and uh yep for now we is just we cannot really do much to be honest it's just we're gonna target higher areas um, and uh, wait for that cor correction. However, uh, looking at this picture here, in order to maybe start considering l much lower levels here, we would need to dr see a drop below the this upside support line. So, yep, that's why for now, guys, be very careful and keep your eyes on this upside support line taken from the low of the 3rd of April. Um, Brent Oil. So, very quickly here, um, Brent Oil is today trading near this upside support line. So, perfect move towards this upside line taken from the low of the 22nd of April. And uh, this is what I mentioned before in my videos, where I was mentioning, uh, where I was saying that in a way, uh, if the commodity gets a hold up near uh, these, uh, near this upside line, then maybe a nice rebound could be possible. However, to get a little bit more comfortable with uh, with a, uh, with the upside scenario, we would probably wait for a um, wait for a push above the uh, this week's high this this week's current high uh, near the 43.40 zone and uh, this way the the commodity would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, yep higher levels could be met uh, however we're not going to drag this one too much to the upside initially we'll, we'll target only the 45.20 zone and uh, slightly above that we do have the the 200 day EMA as well which could provide decent resistance so yep keep your eyes on that one um, now Looking at the, uh, by the way, in terms of oil as well, keep your eyes on today's crude oil inventories uh, coming out from the U.S. So let's see if those, um, currently the expectation is for uh, lower, lower, uh, lower uh, inventories, the lower number, uh, which could be a good sign for oil. Uh, however, of course, like I said, we'll keep an eye on the forecast figure. Check out the economic calendar, guys. And uh, yep, if the, for, if the real actual figure, 
figure comes out uh, below the forecast, uh, or should I say worse than the forecast, then yes, of course, uh, we could see oil uh, dropping lower and maybe breaking this upside support line. However, as I mentioned before, even if we get a break of this upside support line still, uh, for us to consider maybe larger extensions to the downside, we would prefer to wait for a drop below the 36.96 zone, uh, which is marked by the high of the 21st of May. And then, yes, we could aim for lower levels. Uh, now, a quick update on Bitcoin. Again, not much has changed. I've talked about uh, about this one uh, yesterday, and uh, basically, um, still the same idea remains. We're waiting for this one to get out of this zone where it's currently getting into a squeeze. And uh, yep, Bitcoin right now is trading. On one hand, it's trading above this uh, short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March, and on the other hand, it is still trading below this long-term downside resistance line taken from the highest point of December 2017. So that's why for now guys we will be very careful and uh, we'll, we're just gonna wait this one out. Um, for those who are more a little bit on the cautious side um, you could not only wait for a break of this um, of the um, of one of these up uh, one of these lines the upside or the downside one but also for example in terms of the downside you could wait for a drop below the 9300 zone and then aim for lower levels uh, because this would place the price below some of the uh, well one of its key support levels and in terms of the upside uh, a push above the 10,000 and 10 10,050 mark could do the trick for more buyers. So again, something to keep in mind and something to look out for here as because like I said, we are getting into a squeeze. Um, but let's see if we do actually make a, a good move out of this pattern and we're just not going to uh, violate both of these lines and then just continue moving sideways. So something like this could be possible. But again, if we see something like this, then yep, we'll redraw, I'll, I will redraw everything here. But uh, for now, it is how it is. Uh, like I said, let's wait for a violation of one of these lines. Uh, ADGPY, so a quick update here. Um, now, the pair is... Um the pair has, well, did retrace lower yesterday. It, it found very good support here uh, near the 74.47 zone, which is marked by the high of the 19th of February. So very good here uh, for the bulls, of course. But um, yep, as you can see, it's now uh, today it's, it has rebounded, but it's still hanging around here, basically not far from the 74.47 zone. So that's why we'll be very careful because in a way uh, that doesn't mean that uh, this pair could could now travel higher because to be honest we do have a bit of a battle here of um uh, between the two strong pairs because recently uh japanese yen came under some buying interest and uh and that's why um, Australian dollar, who is the stronger one right now as well, um, th that's why in, in this specific pair we can see a, a battle of the um, of the kind of the stronger currencies right th at the moment, and also a good indication of uh, a risk on risk off environment. So you can see that yes, on one hand uh, the uh, the ADGPY was moving higher together with the market, but now given that the market is a little bit overstretched to the upside, we are seeing a bit of weakness here in ADGPY. So maybe this could be an indication that uh, that the market could go for a bit of correction uh, to the downside. But uh, again, looking at this picture specifically here on ADGPY, in order to aim for slightly lower levels, we would need to wait for a drop below the 74.47s zone here and only then we could uh, target slightly lower levels but only up until this upside support line taken from the low the 2nd of April and uh, then we would take it from there of course. In terms of the upside we'll wait for a strong move above the 76.55 zone and only then aim for higher levels. Uh, USD JPY, now this is where I was talking about the uh, kind of the um, the yen coming under buying interest, as you can see here, USDJPY did have a nice rally initially last week, and but this week it is drifting back down. It's wiping out all the gains made uh, during the uh, during last week, and uh, 
uh, what I've mentioned recently in my, one of my videos was that in a way for us to consider a further decline we need to see a nice good drop below the 107.3233 zone roughly around here uh, and ideally we would like to see a nice good daily close below this because as you can see we did have a false breakout here again it's uh, for now it's a false breakout but uh, the, 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 the daily candle it has not ended yet so and that's why we're going to keep an eye on this one uh, by the end of today. Um, we'll see how this is going to play out here. But if we eventually see a nice daily close below this, then yep, uh, lower levels could be met, guys. And uh, initially, we'll then target the 105.94 zone, which, as you can see, acted as a very nice area of resistance here back on the 10th of March. And also, uh, it marks it is marked near the lowest point of May. Uh, GBP NZD. So here the uh, interesting bit is as it's a similar story as I've mentioned uh, today with today and, and yesterday uh, in my when I was covering GBP Aussie basically. So um, you can see that the pound has rebounded and uh, it moved away from this 1.9418 territory roughly around here. Um, today it did drift a little bit lower. However, as you can see, the bulls are still keeping the rate above this area above this 1.9418 zone. So in a way, what we could see here is a nice push, maybe higher. Uh, we'll initially target the 21-day EMA because, uh, as you can see, we had a nice move here, for example, back around the 13th of May, where the pair moved higher but failed to kind of overcome, or should I say, failed to stay above the 21-day EMA and then drifted back down. So that's why initially we will target only the 21 day EMA and we'll after that we'll see we'll take it from there because if we, if it breaks above this then yep high, higher here slightly above this we could we do have the 1.99 zone and the 200 day EMA which also could be seen as nice uh, possible uh, targets. Um, in terms of the downside we would need to see this one drifting sharply back below the 1.9418 zone and uh, yep then this is the by the way the lowest point of December 2019 and then yes further declines could be possible so that's why until then <clears throat> we're not really gonna do uh, do anything which is gonna keep an eye on the you can you can keep an eye on the we'll keep an eye on the price action and like I said for now it seems that there is a possibility for GBP and ZD to rebound and maybe push back to the upside so um, uh, Euro Aussie here now is a bit of a similar situation with uh, Euro Aussie um, so the, as you can see although the Euro was still on the strong uh, was quite strong recently um, still uh, it, it wasn't as as strong as the Australian dollar and uh, this is clearly seen here on Euro AUD chart now um, the fact that the pair finally managed to find support near near the uh, lowest point of February this year near the 1.6086 zone uh, and then rebound from it now this makes this area very strong so this is this, as you can see this here we, I do have a bit a few lines it's a little bit of a mess here but this is, was my previous analysis but um, this is this is going to be the level here that we're going to be keeping a close eye on the 1.6086 zone and uh, in a way the fact that we had a nice rebound here recently uh, we had a few tests of this area but still the rate remained above above this level above the 1.6086 which is the uh, the lowest point of February this year now this kind of creates a good nice atmosphere here for the bulls however let me just probably uh, re redraw everything here again so uh, first of all the fact that it yeah you got a hold up here uh, that's great that's wonderful for the bulls um, however from the slightly short-term perspective, um, of course, we can draw a bunch of downside lines here, but to be honest, all of them are going to be a little bit on the tentative side. So that's why we're going to stick to some of these resistance levels, like, for example, the 1.6366 zone marked by the high of the 4th of June. And, uh, yep, and if we do get a nice push above this, then, yep, we'll start aiming for some higher levels. Uh, the pair could easily then travel towards the 200-day EMA or even maybe be above that so but until we get a clear uh, violation of one of these levels the 1.6086 or the 1.6366 mark 
we cannot really talk about any further directional moves. So um, if we do get a nice push above this barrier here, then yes, we'll aim for some higher levels. But if we get a nice drop below the 1.6086 zone, then well, I mean, further declines are possible here. And yep, the pair could continue with the current prevailing trend, because don't forget that the current trend is still to the downside. So uh, that's why be very careful here, guys. And uh, uh, for now, like, like I said, keep your eyes on these two levels. And finally, Euro USD. So this pair uh, is doing everything according to the plan, uh, the plan that I talked about yesterday, today, and uh, basically it is trying to make its way higher. However, this is what I was talking about this morning, that uh, all the fact that it rebounded from this 1.1237 zone, that's wonderful. Uh, but the fact that it's currently struggling with this barrier here, the 1.1384 zone, this kind of creates this a little bit of a cautious uh, atmosphere here right now and uh, this is basically what I was talking about when I was saying for those who are more on the cautious side wait for a push and a nice good daily close above this level and then aim for higher levels because as you can see we did get a small little break above this and then the pair drifted back down so that's why we don't want to um, want to rush into this yet of course yes overall we're still we still remain positive but uh, we would still like to see a nice could pop above the a nice good probably daily close above the 1.1384 zone and then aim for higher levels so that's why guys for now be very careful with this one and in terms of the downside as i've mentioned this uh, this morning uh, a drop below the 1.1237 zone could do the trick here for more um, for more sellers so guys, I hope you found it useful, and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. And if you want to catch my video tomorrow, my Traders uh, Espresso, as always, uh, around just maybe a little bit after 6 o'clock GMT time, um, I will upload the uh, the recorded video. And uh, because, like I said, um, at the moment, the uh, I, I'm... I need to do the these videos uh, in in recorded format, but um, hopefully from next week uh, everything will get back to normal and uh, we'll we'll run these live. Don't forget about the uh, today's FOMC uh, FOMC uh, statement and of course the interest rate decision. I mean the interest rate most likely uh, will stay the same, uh, but uh, yeah we'll follow the um, the statement and uh, the language of the federal Federal Reserve. So yeah, keep your eyes on down. We may see a bit of volatility. So that's why uh, be very careful then. So thank you very much, guys. And I'll speak to you or I'll catch you later. Thank you very much. And bye bye.